Hi everyone, welcome to your Thriving Family Online Summit. My name is Evrim Numanolo Özgen and I'm your host. This online summit brings world-renowned experts together to talk about how to lay a strong foundation for a connected, joyful and happy family. Today, my special guest is Paula Mitten. Paula, is an internationally recognized yoga instructor. She offers yoga classes, retreats, teacher trainings, and one-to-one -one coaching for yoga teachers, both in person and online. Her classes are strong, energetic, and fun with a focus on a correct and functional alignment. Paula continues her journey, spiritual journey, as a dedicated student and a teacher. And I'm so excited that we have Paula today. Uh, first of all, I, I follow her work uh, and I know that she impacts families through her work. And uh, she is a dear friend to me as well. And I wanted you to tap into Paula's world with yoga and how it impacts families. Welcome, Paula. Thank you, Avram. I'm absolutely honored to be on your show. So thank you so much. Great. And I'm also, I have to say that I'm also so happy, Paula, that we are uh, on the same time zone. And, <laughs> and you are doing this interview in a more on the morning, which is so unusual for me for the last one and a half years. Yeah. So, welcome again. And um, Paula, can we start with you and your work? Can you tell us a little about how you started doing yoga and, and what is the role of yoga in, in your world? Yeah, um, so I started, actually, I, I haven't always taught yoga. Um, I used to be a costume designer. So I, I worked as a costume designer in film and television. And um, it, I found actually the stresses of the job and the long hours, um, just I needed to find something that I could unwind and let go at the end of the day I often found I'd come home late at night from work and I couldn't sleep and I'd dream about work and then I'd wake up very early starts in the morning and I wouldn't have had I wouldn't feel like I had a restful sleep at all so that's what led me down the path towards yoga and at the time it wasn't actually the physical practice that I turned to it was the uh, mindfulness the relaxation and the breathing techniques that that I found first and it was quite, a, you know, maybe a couple of years later, I was in my early 20s. This was like my first big career. Um, so it, it was a, a few years later then that I discovered the physical side of the practice. Um, so that was sort of what, what led me to it. And uh, actually, uh, what often happens and what happens, I think, for everybody, regardless of what the reason is that you come to, to look for yoga, we all end up getting very similar things from the practice. So whether you, you come to it for the physical side, because some people, they, they might start for fitness reasons or flexibility or de-stress or whatever it is. It doesn't matter. You might start with the meditation. But we tend to end up discovering all of the, the sides of yoga, which is what happened to me. I left the film industry uh, shortly after I found yoga. <laughs> And, um, and I trained to be a fitness instructor and I worked in, in fitness and in, in, in the management of the gyms um, whilst training to be a yoga teacher. So I, I really just uh, it very quickly started to follow the yoga path and the, um, the more holistic lifestyle, which I, honestly, I don't really think that I had in my um, in my childhood or in my teenage life, I didn't have really much aware, awareness of that at all. It was yoga that brought me down that whole path. Um, and that's, I mean, uh, long story short, but that's how I, I found myself where I am today. I think there was a, there was a second part of that question. I can't remember, <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember what it was. <laughs> so um, thank you, Paula. Thanks for sharing. And um, yeah, I, I resonate with what you what you told as your story that you had a career which was stressful and then when you when you when you found out the holistic lifestyle and spirituality aspect and I guess the peace and calmness that it, I guess that became your life and I hear this from many experts actually that I've interviewed and it's my story too and um, yeah the second part of the question was actually what 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 is the role of yoga in your life? I mean, you teach to yoga teachers, you teach to your students, and you work with uh, families uh, as well. So, so if you look that way, so what is the role of yoga in your life? 
Uh -huh. that's, a, that's a big question. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, really, yoga is my life, actually. It's, you know, and it, which is an amazing thing because I, I love the yoga practice. I fell in love with it really quickly. Um, and it became something that I practiced. So once I started going to the, I, I practiced the breathing and the relaxation myself every single day. And once I found the physical practice um, through classes, I started to practice that at home as well um, uh, to a point where I was practicing every day and I needed to to take it further um, somebody said to me why are you not teaching this like why don't why aren't you doing this because it's all you ever talk about and it's all you ever think about so it became my world so I, I mean now I work actually mainly I work with parents and probably more women than men more mothers than fathers, although I think the majority of my students are actually um, parents. Um, and uh, I, like, I get so much from the practice myself that I just want to share it with anybody and everybody who, who's interested in, in learning, you know, and interesting, interested in getting the benefits from it. So I suppose, um, you know, to go back to, to what I got from the practice initially was actually the connection with the breath. So the breath is a huge, huge part of the yoga practice. And it plays a huge role, regardless of whether you do um, a gentle practice or a physical practice. We can talk about that. There's lots of different styles of yoga, whether it's meditation or it's just relaxation or something. The breath actually is the key. And it's the, the main thing that will take you through um, your, your practice on the mat, but then your, your life your work, your family, you know, all of the elements, because the breath is what, what brings you to your center. It's what allows you to be calm and, um, and focused in yourself. So, I mean, like the, we know through studies that if our breath is slow and deep, that we can't be stressed. We actually are in a place of calmness. Um, when, if you see somebody that's calm, you can see that they're, uh, their breath is slow and steady. And if you see somebody who's stressed, you can see that their breath is really short and shallow. Um, and the, the good thing is that that crosses over. If you're stressed, you can slow down your breath and take yourself out of a place of stress. Like it, you, you don't, you know, it, it's not one or the other. So if you find that you're, you sometimes we all know we can feel the anxiety starting to build up or we can feel the stress at the early stages before it, you know, before we go into overwhelm. Um, and when, when you catch it in that place and then you connect with your breath and you just slow your breath down, you don't need any fancy techniques. There are loads of techniques that we use, but you don't need them. You just slow down your breath and connect with your breath and start to deepen your breath to a comfortable pace. So we're, you're not straining, you're not trying to force it to be slow, but you're just slowing it down and being connected with it. Then that brings you back to your place of center back to your calmness, back to your, um, you know, you, you lose the stress, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it was that side of things that I found in the very beginning. And I kept that with me through everything that I've ever done. And so it's the center of, of um, my life. It keeps me grounded. It keeps me uh, out, of, out of stress. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Paula. And um... Yeah, I mean, you, you started talking about different types of yoga, and I want to ask about that to you. But before that, can we talk about um, the role of yoga? Um, again, you, you talked about, you know, the breath aspect, especially. Uh, but I, I know that, you know, there is more. And we talked earlier about how you see the impact in your own family. So can we talk about uh, how yoga can support families, moms, dads, or, you know, anyone in the family to create connection, joy, health, calmness, and peace. Can Absolutely. you tell us about that? Absolutely. Um, you know what? It actually starts in pregnancy. Um, it starts be before baby is born. Um, and I get a lot of pregnant uh, mothers coming to me um, for, for classes. And, uh, you know, the, the first thing is, um, is really actually 
getting out of your head space. So somewhere in, I don't know, lost in translation, we've, we've disconnected from our, our minds, from our bodies and our breath. So we tend to be very much in the, the head space and we're busy and we're, we're always doing and thinking ahead and not really in our bodies and feeling and trusting in ourselves. So when I have pregnant women in a yoga class, my number one priority is to get them to really connect with their own body, to connect with their baby, to start to find that, you know, that deep connection that like sometimes during the day, you're so busy, you actually forget that you've got baby on board, you know, <laughs> you know yourself <laughs> what it's like. Um, so, so coming and just checking in and observing your baby, how's baby today? observing your body and then on a deeper level over time we work through um, the, the the different layers within the yoga practice we see the body as different layers and when you go deep inside yourself you have the busy mind um, like we call it the monkey mind and then another part of your mind is your intellect your wisdom and it's that inner truth where it's the, the part that knows you know like a mother's instinct where you know the truth but the outer mind can sort of throw you off that. It can be busy and, and noisy. And what we're doing is we're trying to slow down the, the outer thoughts and get really connected with that inner wisdom so that you can come out of your head, connect with your body, connect with your baby and learn to trust yourself. So that through pregnancy, you, you know if there's everything's okay or if there's something wrong. Um, through going into birth, you can really connect with your baby and trust your baby and your body and listen to the signs and the signals that the body gives you to birth your baby. Um, and, and then it, it continues on into, into the early days of baby where we use our, well, one, our instinct to, you know, to connect with baby, but also then the breath keeps you calm through your pregnancy through your birth and then those early days especially first time mums and you're trying to figure everything out and and you can get quite anxious the breath is what keeps you calm and connected and just able to to turn in and trust yourself and trust your own mm -hmm. instinct so it starts really right away before baby actually enters the world you know before a baby's birthed um and then um, in terms of like for me with my children very early I introduced breathing techniques to my children and uh, particularly I, I always remember my my eldest my son he um, you know he would get really mad you know the terrible twos and he'd get really worked up and I'd say to him take a big deep breath and blow it out and he'd take a breath and he'd blow it out I'd say let's take another big deep breath and just blow it out and after mm -hmm. two or three the, the anger, the frustration would be gone. And I was like, this is amazing. So I started to use it. And then suddenly, you know, a little while into using it, he realized that actually um, it works. And he wanted to be mad. <laughs> so he would say, no, I won't take a big deep breath and blow it out. Because <laughs> he knew that it was going to you know, it was, it was going to calm him and he wanted to have the rage. <laughs> but you know what? he still we still use that technique uh it, it was a short time where he rebelled against it and then he knew and if he hurt himself we'd sit with the breath and we'd say it's okay breathe big deep breath exhale long exhalation and just come back to your calmness it's okay so i used that technique with him from the time he was very young like a, a toddler from probably one and a half to that age and so um with my daughter when she arrived I started with her too and she didn't rebel against it she she likes it <laughs> she so far she hasn't uh, she hasn't tried not to use it um so that's one technique that I I use with my children um I don't do a physical practice with them but something that my son started doing recently which um I love like in the last year he was waking up particularly early in the morning you know maybe 5 30 by 6, 6 a.m. he was waking up and I didn't want to discourage it. They go to bed early. Um, he was sleeping as long as he needed to and then he would wake up really early. So um, so I decided 
I was saying to him, what about if he sat and did some meditation in the mornings? And he was using um, a YouTube channel that they sometimes would use in school. They sometimes do meditation in school. So I said, why don't we set that up? So when you get up, you can put on the laptop, put on a meditation and maybe do 15, 20 minutes of meditation. And he started, he has had a daily meditation practice since then. Um, and very quickly, maybe like four to six weeks afterwards, I was talking to him about how he was feeling. And that quickly, he could see the difference in how, in his reaction, or even his reaction time, you know, when his little sister would wind him up, <laughs> he was less likely to get irritated in school, he found himself more focused. Um, like he, you know, I was just very casually asking him, did he notice any changes or in different things? And this is what he was telling me. Um, so, you know, that's how I've introduced it to my, to my children so that they have some benefit because, um, you know, there's lots of children's yoga classes that you can do, but I feel like that's the, the core to the yoga practice. Everything else you do is a bonus, you know, whether we're moving or we're doing fancy handstands or, you know, sometimes we have an image of people with their legs wrapped around their head or whatever it is. That's, you know, that's a, something on additional. But I think the, what I, I want to, my children to get from it is the real basics that are going to help them in their everyday life in school and when they get older, when they're doing their exams and when they start to go into the, the big bad world, you know, and um, that's what I try to share with them. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing, Paula. And uh, your, your children are pretty young, right? I mean, if they can have this uh, consciousness at this age, as you said, it's amazing that they're preparing for uh, even more stressful times as they grow up. Unfortunately, that is how, how things are, are working. Uh, but it's great that, you know, they are, they are in this strong foundation uh, with connection, joy and health. Mm -hmm. um, and I would, now I'd like to ask you um, actually a very simple question about yoga. Uh, as you said, there are different aspects to yoga, like the breath work and uh, the spirituality part and um, meditation and the physical part. Years, years, years ago, I think it was like maybe even 15 years ago, that was probably the first time that I wanted to try yoga. And there were classes in the gym that I was going in London. And and it was really, I mean, how I experienced that was almost like a very challenging stretching poses or, you know, really very challenging physical work. And I didn't, I have to say that I didn't continue long because that wasn't what I was looking for. I was already very active physically and doing lots of other things. Um, and then later on, I found out about, oh, yoga is actually like, you know, it's, it's not just of that physical physical work and can you tell us a little bit about you know what yoga is and what kind of options that we have especially if you think about families um so any advice about that would be great yeah um yeah yoga really it, it's about being in the now it's about it it's being present that's what yoga is it's uniting all of the different um levels of your being like your mind your body your breath um, your spirituality, whatever it is, it's bringing all of that together and then being present so that we're not living in the past or being distracted by what's to come in the future, but just um, like focusing on what's going on right now. What do I need to do now? Yes, we can plan. Of course, we all plan for the future, but what do I need to do in this moment that will take me forward? Um, nothing that has happened to date uh, really counts anymore it's gone it's not real so now this moment is the only moment we have that's real and happening and it's gone and there's another now and another now and it's just constantly that you know that's what the yoga practice is on a you know on the very basic level right and what we're doing is we're using different techniques to get us to a place where we can be as present as we possibly can where we can be in the now. So what you experienced was like a physically challenging asana practice. There's, there's many different sides to the yoga practice. Um, most yoga traditions follow the eight limb path and uh, the physical practice is just one of those limbs. So we, we need to live a, a yogic lifestyle and live in a particular way where we're not harming 
anybody and we're, we're living a yogic life. And then we move on to the physical practice. And for some people, and, and as well as that, you've got your pranayama, which is the breathing exercises, the breath control work that we do. And we've got different um, levels of meditation. Um, so it's, it's, there's many different sides of it, right? So some people will come in and they'll do, they'll start with relaxation techniques like I did. And it's, that, that's exactly what you're doing. You're trying to focus on your body now, the sensations that come up in your body, the feelings, um, just exploring like you've never seen your body before. Like you're exploring it like you're a newborn baby. You've no labels, you've no judgment, because sometimes we tend to judge things good or bad, but it's only what we've learned in our lifetime. But if you can just experience something, sensation and awareness without putting any labels on it, you can see it in a whole different in a whole different life, which is very helpful when you've got a family that you're, you know, whether you're staying with the kids all day or you're working part time or you're working full time, there's always things that we're trying to balance um, and we're always trying to stay centered and it can be difficult, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so then you, you'll have different practices that are like a physical practice that are more gentler, right? Because the idea is that of the physical practices that we're moving our bodies to clear the energy channels, to clear the, the nadis, we call them the energy channels so the energy can flow freely. We want it to be like a moving meditation. We want to be able to move our body and breathe as we're moving the body and be aware of the movement without our mind wandering. So I always recommend people when they start a physical practice to start with a like the basics, you know, to start with a, like a very gentle physical practice where you're just moving your joints and moving your body. And some poses are strengthening and some poses are bringing flexibility, but you're trying, you want to always in the, the practice balance, effort and ease, because actually the yoga practice is about bringing balance. You know, Hatha yoga, the physical practice of, the, of yoga is about balancing the right and left sides of the body, the effort and the ease, the yin and the yang, the hot and the cold, all the different sides that we have. You're trying to bring that balance. And that's what we want to bring into our family life, right? That's what we're trying to, I think certainly as a mother, that's what I'm trying to create for our home, you know, with my husband and my children, that we, we have balance um, that I'm centered and that the, you know, I, I'm grounded in the moment and I'm, I'm not getting kind of torn in all different directions. Um, and what happens is with the physical practice, the more you practice, the stronger and the more flexible you get, right? So I would prefer somebody to be in a, you know, pose that's for flexibility, say a seated forward bend or something, to be more upright and feel some stretch but not be torturing themselves than to be trying to reach their toes, but like waiting for the exact moment that I say they can come out. Cause they're already in the future. They're thinking, when's she going to say, come out of the pose? You're trying to, you want to feel something. But you don't want to be in such a place that you're right on your edge and you're, you're waiting, waiting to get out of the pose. Cause that's not being in the now. And it's not good for your body. If you go back to the elements that we talked about in terms of, um, how you like the different, uh, the eight different parts of the practice. It's not, it's being violent to yourself. It's not being very caring to your body. If you're forcing yourself so far, you know, that you're, you're tortured, but over time you get stronger, you get more flexible and you can go further. And to somebody beside you, they might be looking going, Oh, I need to get to that place. But to you, you don't feel like you're in a place of stress. You're actually right in the balance, the perfect place for your body in that moment, it might not be the same tomorrow. It, you know, tomorrow I might not be able to do it because I'm tired or it doesn't feel good or I've injured myself or whatever it is, something comes up and tomorrow I don't do it. But in this moment, it feels good and I can do it. Um, so, you know, perhaps the, when, when we go to a class, it's just not the right, it, maybe not the right level or not the right style or sometimes it's just the connection. It's not the right teacher, you know, that is for you. Because you need the right teacher also. Yeah, so true. Thank you for that follow-up. And um, I 
Well, this is such a this is such a perfect place. I think you know you gave a lot to us about you know different types of yoga and the impact of yoga, and I imagine that there will be some people in our audience who want to try yoga if maybe they have they are already doing, maybe they haven't tried it before, and um, so this is if this this is something that is going to create connection, presence, joy, and and um, like harmony in the family balance, as you said, in the family, I would say that it is about every single person in the family, right? You talked about the pregnancy and the mothers. And um, so the fathers or whoever is in the family, even maybe, you know, grandparents sometimes or children. So this, this I see this as something to be shared um, and also done individually. So what would you advise for families who want to start practicing yoga or maybe who, you know, some, some individuals in the family are doing, but they want to create this unifying foundation through yoga, this balance uh, through yoga. What would you say the next step would be? Yeah. Um, I suppose it, it depends on the, on the family themselves. If they want to practice together, there are actually lots of classes that are like family classes, you know, where you can go uh, with the, the parents and the children go together and it's very much uh, expect a, a, a children's yoga class. It's very fun and it's very much about getting the children interested in the practice more so than for the adults. Um, so that's if you've younger children, you know, maybe up to age 11 or 12, that can be really nice. I get lots of mums bringing their, um, their daughters, usually teenage daughters with them to practice they've got, they're in exam year or, you know, they're coming towards that stage. They're in their second level education um, and they, they're kind of setting them up for what's to come. Um, and so like I welcome them into the class. So they come with their, their children. I say daughters because I tend to get more um, girls than boys coming into the class in, in their teenage years. Um, I don't know why that is. <laughs> it might be because a female teacher, maybe they go to the male teacher, I don't know. Um, but that's also a nice way that you can bring your child along with you to, to yoga so they've, they've got your support. Um, and if you can't get out of the house, like just start with five minutes. Sometimes we're fixed on it has to be a certain length of time or it has to be a look a certain way. It doesn't. Actually, it's consistency that's more important than anything else. So five minutes a day to, to work on um, just relaxation or meditation or breathing. Um, there's lots of online um, classes that you can take, whether it's a, a website that you subscribe to. Usually you'll get like really good quality classes and, and different time slots. You can pick the amount of time that you have. Um, but there's also lots of free, free classes on, on YouTube that you can, uh, that you can access and it can be just a short time you can practice together or separately it, like it's nice to practice together and then for a parent and for the, the children it's nice to do their own thing as well like you can have children's yoga and teenage yoga that's completely separate from their parents they're going to do it on their own and that can be a really nice way it depends on what you're looking for for your family there's lots of different avenues to get into it um, but it doesn't have to be any set time frame and it doesn't have to be in a class if you you know if you don't have the, the time to get out to a class you don't have the budget then go on YouTube and you'll find classes I have a few classes on YouTube and I have promised my students we have a, a section on the website that we're about to put classes on as well purely because people keep asking me to to do it so I, I'm doing it to, to support so that you can practice at home you know um so anything five minutes ten minutes a day is better than nothing and actually five minutes a day is better than an hour every other week it's the consistency that counts if you're if you're randomly going to classes and even if you're going once a week you need to be doing a little bit at home to really see the shift and the difference and honestly you'll be so much happier in yourself so much more content when you're coming from a place where you're grounded and you're centered um, so just to add in some little bit when I started first practicing at home I used to just lie in bed for five minutes before I went to sleep doing some breathing techniques and that was it 
you know, and I know that I started before I had the children, but really quickly after I had, uh, after I had my children, there was a gap where I didn't do anything because I was all consumed with baby. I had sections for my children, so I wasn't doing any physical stuff for a little while. And very quickly, I could see that I needed the practice again. So I went back to just breathing, relaxation in bed before I fell asleep. That's it. Or when I was feeding baby to sit back in the rocking chair, close my eyes and just breathe and focus and be present. And like simple things like that will go a long way. Thank you, Paula. Is there anything else that you'd like to say to our audience? Maybe we haven't touched on. Um, really just to uh, see, can you take on board something? I know we've covered a lot, uh, you know, in just a very short space of time, but if there's one thing that you could take and maybe integrate it into your life and give it a little bit of, of time to see the, the benefits, give it a go. Um, because it really will help you. It will bring you the joy and the balance and, and help to, to uh, bring more of a connection to you and to your family. Um, so yeah, give it a try. And any, I'm always here to support. Like it, this is my passion. So, you know, if there's any questions, if you ever want any advice on anything, I'm always happy to support. Just send me an email. Um, my email is info at derga.ie. So you can, and I'm sure Ephraim will put that in somewhere. So you, you can always email me with questions or anything that you want to ask. And I'm very, very happy to support. Thank you, Paula. And um, yeah, I would also add that watch out Paula's website because I also look forward to her online videos and online maybe programs. Something is coming out. I know that. So, so <laughs> that's another thing I would like to say. And um, Paula, do you have any gift for our audience? Um, so I have a, just a short relaxation um, that you can access and really you can use it anytime, um, just a little quiet time. So if you're wondering where to start or if you find it hard, you know, to, to get to sleep, if your mind is busy or you find you wake up in the night, it can be really helpful just to help you to, um, to relax and quieten down the mind. Perfect. Thank you so much. And the link to the gift that Paula is offering us and to Paula's website, they are both in the same email that you received this interview. So let's go back to the email and click on those links and get your gift. Thank you so much, Paula. And thank you everyone for joining us again. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that you will try the relaxation technique that Paula is offering us. And I will see you in the next interview. Bye. Thank you, Abram. Thank you.